a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to the Back to the Bible radio program. This is Brent Arnold, the preacher for the Greenfield Church of Christ in Greenfield, Tennessee. And I'm delighted to have the opportunity to study God's Word with you this morning. Now, let us open God's Word together as we go back to the Bible. One of the worst things that you can do to a person is to misrepresent them. When you have a person of character who is represented as a hypocrite, when they don't deserve that, that's heartbreaking when you find out that that's happened to you. None of us like to find out that this has happened to us. That someone said something of us that wasn't true. When someone represented us as doing something or saying something that we didn't do or say. And as much as we become frustrated with this, how even more dangerous it is when folks misrepresent God. You know, that happens. All of the time, people say, well, God said this when God didn't say that. Or God will do this when God has no intention of doing that. God thinks this way or feels that way. Or, or uh, all, this goes on and on. And a lot of it is not based in the Bible. And because of that, a lot of it is a misrepresentation of God. When we read the book of Job, Job had three friends, and as my beloved teacher Curtis Cates said, when you had friends like Job, you didn't need enemies. When Job was suffering, they came to him, and for seven days they sat silently with Job, mourning with him and grieving with him, and, and they, would have, they would have done a great job as friends of Job if they would have just, uh, just continued to sit, sit there silently, but they didn't. They began to speak. They began to speak on behalf of God, but unfortunately they were not saying the things that God would have had them to say on this occasion. And because of that, they committed a terrible sin. As you come to the end of the book, Job chapter 42, verse 7, says, And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. The Lord said to these friends that his anger was kindled against them because what they said of him was not right. Let's think today about the seriousness of of misrepresenting God. First of all, let's talk about how did Job's friends misrepresent God? Well, there are probably a number of different things that I could say about that, but since our time is limited, we're going to focus primarily uh, on three things. Number one, they said that suffering is always a result of sin. For example, Eliphaz in Job 4, 7 says, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Bildad in Job 18, 5 through 6 said, Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. This was their main line of thinking. They they were telling Job, Job, the reason you're suffering so badly, the reason that you're suffering ill health, the reason that you've lost your possessions, the reason that your children have been killed in an unfortunate accident is because you're a sinner and God is punishing you. And, and their main line of thinking is, is that the righteous never suffer and all suffering is a punishment of sin. But in this particular case, that just simply wasn't true. Sometimes our sin does cause suffering. But not always is suffering a result of sin. Job was a perfect and upright man. 
one who feared God and turned away from evil. Evil, Job 1.1. 1, 1. Even Job defended his uh, honesty, his integrity, his character over in Job uh, chapter 21. And uh, verses 7 through 11, he speaks of this. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bull gendereth and faileth not, their cow calveth and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance." Job is pointing out here, sometimes things go well for evil people. And uh, that's the truth. Sometimes that does happen in this life. And so it is not true to, to say that God always uh, sends suffering to punish sin in this life. And uh, for these friends to come to Job and say that God was punishing Job, was a misrepresentation. Secondly, they misrepresented to God by appealing to the majority. Eliphaz in Job 15.10 said, With us are both the gray-headed and the very aged men much elder than thy father. Eliphaz is basically saying that Job should go along with them because everyone else did especially those who were elders, those who were intelligent men agreed with them. You know, Satan is still making some of the same arguments today. You know, he, he'll say, do, can you, do you really believe in creation? Come on. Surely you don't believe that mess. All of the PhDs, they believe in evolution. And, and these, these very great scholars, these very intelligent men, they know that creation is ridiculous. Does that sound familiar? It's the same argument that Eliphaz was making. And you know what? The same product is happening in both places. God is being misrepresented. And it doesn't matter if you have PhD after your name. If you mis misrepresent God, there will be serious consequences. And we cannot afford to just follow the crowd. We, got, we have to follow what God says. I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that directeth uh, to direct his own steps. Jo Jeremiah 10, 23. But primarily, these friends misrepresented God because they lied about God's servant. They said that God's servant, Job, was a wicked man, a terrible man. Zophar, in Job 20, 15, said, He hath swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. Zophar was saying that Job was a greedy man. Eliphaz said in Job 22, 7 through 9, Thou hast not given water to the weary to drink, and thou hast withholden bread from the hungry. But as for the mighty man, he had the earth, and the honorable man dwell in it. Thou hast sent widows away empty, and the arms of the fatherless have been broken. Eliphaz accused Job of being inconsiderate of those who were in need. Both of these accusations were absolutely false. Job was a man of impeccable integrity, who, according to Job 31, 16 through 22, had been very generous in helping those who were in need, and who never honored riches as the highest priority in his life, but always put God first and his family second. Now, perhaps some of what these friends said was right, but whatever they might have said right would not undo what they did and what they said that was wrong. They had misrepresented God. And the seriousness of this is they had committed sin against God. In Job 42, toward the end of the book, God deals with their sin and urges them to seek Job to make sacrifice for them and to pray for them that God would be merciful. The very fact that they had to offer sacrifice tells me they were guilty of sin. They were in need of forgiveness. And if they had not repented of their sin and sought the forgiveness of God, 
and they would have been held accountable for their sin on the day of judgment. The same will happen to anyone today who misrepresents God. The prophet that shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die, Deuteronomy 18.20 says. It is serious business to speak before men and misrepresent God. We must speak in a way, always, that is consistent with the Bible, the Word of God. Then and only then can we be sure that we will represent God as He means to be represented. Isaiah 55.11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Matthew 5.18 Till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle shall in any wise pass from the law, till all is fulfilled. Luke 21.33 Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Folks do misrepresent God today. For example, when people tell others that God loves to have many different churches, they are misrepresenting God. Because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible tells us plainly that Jesus promised to build one church, Matthew 16, 18. That he has only one body. Ephesians 4.4 4 says there is one body, and that one body is the church. Ephesians 1.21-23 So if, if I were to come on this program and tell you, just choose the church of your choice, and, and God will be happy with any church that you choose. He doesn't care one way or another. He endorses many different kinds of churches all over the world. I would be misrepresenting God. And I don't want to do that. Because not only would that disappoint him, but it would damn your soul, if you believe it. And it would condemn my soul for telling you that lie. That's serious business. Instead, we should strive for the unity that God desires. We should strive to be the one church about which we read in the Bible. The church of Christ, Romans 16 and verse 16. Those who claim that God will accept our worship no matter how we offer it, they're misrepresenting God. That's not what God has said. The Bible says that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God accepts true worship, and true worship is that which is offered from the heart and according to the Bible. Those who discount the importance of obedience misrepresent God. God would have us to fear Him and keep His commandments. Now we see what a terrible thing it is to misrepresent God. And I hope that we can take a lesson from Job and his friends and avoid committing this wrong at all cost. May we simply take God at His word and never attempt to change it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Again, this has been Brent Arnold from the Greenfield Church of Christ. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope and pray that this lesson has been a blessing to you and we hope that you'll tune in again next week to this same station at this same time. Please come and visit us as soon as you can. We're located on Highway 45 in Greenfield, Tennessee. We meet on Sundays at 10, 1045 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. You can contact us either by calling us at 731-235-2341 or by emailing us at greenfieldchurchofchrist at yahoo.com. We'll be looking forward to our next opportunity to go back to the Bible. Till then, have a great day.